Good morning. Well, good morning, good afternoon. Whenever you're watching this, listen, I hope you're having a great day. Um, today I'm talking to you about coping with difficult people. Uh, my name is Kenya Cagle. I'm an MBA. I also am certified in film. And uh, let's see, I, I'm um, part of the Hollywood Film Institute. So I've done, I've done a bunch of movies and stuff like that. And I'm here today to talk to you about coping with difficult people in the film industry. This is such a serious topic. This is my third edition of it. It is really, really important that you, as a movie producer, that you learn how to deal with the difficult people that come in and out of your life. Now, even on a small level, because I consider myself on a small level, and I'm working towards becoming a medium level and becoming a, a big level, but right now I'm still on a small level. The thing you have to know is that there are a lot of different personalities that are going to come and that's going to be attracted to you as you develop your dream. And these personalities are not always good and not always great. It's an art. And so you just want to art. So you just want to be a filmmaker and do a film. But there's a business side to it. Whenever there's money involved, whenever there's the potential money involved, wherever there's stardom involved, where there's a, a potential of taking the next step, like a like fire, like flies attracts the fire or light. They're going to come and you're going to have to deal with them or somebody's going to have to deal with them. Different things happen in this industry and things happen between you, between producers. And sometimes all you wanted to do was make a film. And next thing you know, you've got mobsters around you. You have gangsters around you. You have um, groupies, all of this, right? I mean, listen, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. But I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to be real to you because I know most of the folk that's listening are people who know me in the industry already and you and you believe in me, right? And some of you are being mentored by me and I'm not going to hold back and I'm not going to give you anything that doesn't work. And there's nothing I'm talking about today that I haven't been through or someone that I know haven't been through. So now this is the thing you have to know, coping with, dealing with and making sure that you can get through all the way to the end of your film and your film project. You don't know why they pop up on your set. You don't know why they, they wind up in your film, but, but they do. A lot of times there's a big, there's a big um, population of, of addicts in the world, not just in the film industry, in the world but they're going to wind up on your set, right? And when, when they wind up on your set, they're going to do addictive things. And some of them are out of control in their real life, but you don't know it when you're talking to them. We don't know it when you're hiring them. And the thing is, you're going to have to make sure that everything is inventory. Everything is watched. If you bring certain people to your house or certain sets and you don't know it, there's going to be things missing and disappearing. And addicts have addictive behavior, right? That's why they say that addicts wind up with jails, institutions, or death. They have addictive behavior. And the thing is, what you have to know is that you, as the director, the producer, you're responsible for whomever you bring onto the set or invite to anyone's home. You're responsible. If, if you go to a set, if you take a group of people to a set and you leave the set and you leave for four or five months and one of those actors are true or you know, camera people, anybody, one of them was crooked, one of them was a criminal and they go back and they rob that house or they hurt somebody, you are personally responsible you can wind up doing time for what someone else has done. So you have to cover your butt, right? Cover your butt. Make sure that you do everything possible, right? Standard and reasonable practice of making sure 
that everyone that you have is vetted in a way so that you know who that person is. And when you find out that so-and-so is an addict or so-and-so is a criminal or so-and-so has certain type of problems, when you find that out, then you have to make sure that you don't take them any place or put them any place where not just now, not just today, but even a few years from now, that your people don't have, um, that your people, people you love and places you took them, that they're not going to face problems with somebody later down the, road, down the line. You're responsible for whomever you bring in your orbit. This is a business of false realities. I can't stress that to you enough. That means people are going to put on a face, a mask, and they're going to pretend to be something other than, and you're going to be bringing them to your house, the house of, houses of those that you love, your godchildren's houses, right, to do a film. And then the film and the whole thing is not even worth it. So always bet your people well, right? Um, like I said, everybody have problems and things like that. I'm going to tell you a story. Gangsters. You're going to run into gangsters. Maybe you won't. Maybe. I ran into gangster. I ran into a gangster. Right? I ran into a gangster who took a check. And, and this is the thing. You don't know who gangsters are. The gangster I ran into was the father of an Academy Award winning star. Father of an Academy, Academy Award winning star. I'm going to tell you. And this is what happened. He asked for a certain amount of money. I gave him a check. Well, first of all, I, I didn't want to give him a check, but he called his famous son. His famous son said, hey, listen, um, you know, please give it to my dad, you know, and uh, and I'm, I may even do a cameo. I'm like, fine. So I wrote out a check. He changed the numbers on the check and had the checks cashed by some mobsters. And the mobsters started calling me when the check did not clear. And they started to come to my house and to harass me, right? This is what you will face when you work with the wrong people. Now, we, the only way that we had to solve it and deal with it, the police had to be called. You know, other gangsters got involved. Um, listen, I, there's a young man, rest his soul, he, he, he passed away later on, who who was there for me, who's like, yeah, okay, we're going to deal with this, right? But you have to know, all I want to do is do a film. And now I'm meeting gangsters at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, trying to solve this thing, right? You have to understand, it's a business. And what are you going to do? How bad do you want to know? You don't want to meet gangsters. But that's what it is. You have to learn how to deal with people. And I had to deal with them. In a certain way, and you deal with certain people in certain ways. You want to cope with people. You want to take all you can. You want to do what you can with people. But sometimes you have to draw the line. This is the line, right? This is the line. And sometimes you're going to lose money. You're going to lose investment. Some of your investors are going to lose their money. And, you know, this is the thing that happens. But you have to keep on going. You have to keep on striving. Hopefully, you won't do anything that's going to put yourself at risk and others at risk. But at the same time, you don't know where you're going to wind up. You don't know who you took. When you, you Sometimes you find out later that you just took a criminal, you know, to so-and-so's house, right? You don't know. I, I, you know, I, as a filmmaker, you're going to work with a variety of people. i am worked with people who have had records, who have gotten records afterwards. You don't judge people. You don't judge people on that. But you still have to protect yourself. Um, you know, I've, I've been in industry a long time. A lot of people have become ancestors. They've gone on. Um, there was one girl we was working with, um, and she was choked to death by her boyfriend. In fact, there was two girls that I have worked with over a period of time who were, who were killed. And there's um, a young man who swallowed his tongue. And these things happen. 
but you have to cope with it. You have to deal with it. And your cast and crew, you have to get together. And it's the, if that's going to be the end of your project, then you don't have a great project. You want to make sure. Remember, your goal is you got to get the project done. But life happens at the same time. You want to cover your butt. You want to cover your butt. In this world and at this time, you know, there's a lot of things you have to be aware of. So you dealing with putting this film together, that's all you want to do, right? But things are happening. People are coming in your orbit. Um, and, you know, people are going to, some people are going to bond because of you. They're going to bond and they're going to become friends for life. They're going to meet their best friends on your set. People who describe the set that you go to are the ones that they've been with me. Describe this as the best times of their life. That working with me was the best times of their life. Or working on the set was the best time of their life. But you still have to have these safeguards and you still have to know that things is going to happen no matter how much you protect yourself. So you always got to start covering your butt. Cover your butt. The Me Too movement is on. Right? The Me Too movement is out. And sometimes, I mean, it's a very good movement. It's helping a lot of people and it's saving a lot of women. But there's going to be somebody who's going to want to take advantage of that. You, you don't understand. People are people. People are people. They want roles. They want things. And they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you, hey, man, you know, I want this role. Right? And, and let me tell you, it's going to come. It's going to come from who you don't expect to, co to come from. The nicest, most innocent looking person is going to be the one to call you and tell you they want a role. And you're going to have to tell them because they're not talented enough or because you have something else in mind. You're going to have to tell them that you, you, you know, you can't have this role. You got another role. And sometimes resentment is going to build up. And when the resentment builds, that's when you're going to see certain things change. Always look out for the resentment. You're a business person. You're not just an artist. And you, and you may want to just be an artist and just a filmmaker and producer. But your film had potential to become a multi-million dollar hit. Nobody knows what a hit is. Disney don't know. Nobody knows how to make a hit all the time. They just don't know. Disney, they're very good at it. But if anybody can guarantee you that something is going to be a hit, that something is going to be uh, uh, successful and make millions, if anybody can guarantee it, then that person will have so many people around them that he won't even be able to walk from one step to the next. But this is what you got to know. You're going to run into these people. So cover yourself. The Me Too movement, I said, great movement. But sometimes people are going to take advantage. You're going to be told. I, I was told. Directors were told. Producers. And it goes both ways, too. Right? But you're going to be told in bell threats. of hey, You know, when you were talking to them, you can't even talk to people, certain people anymore. You can't go to lunch. You can't have private conversations. Right? I always... I always try to have, when I have conversations, especially about business, I always try to have my personal assistant or my production manager with me. There's three people. you got to have a witness. Listen, I can't tell you what to do on your set. Try not to date on your set. Try not to date. I, you know, have your girlfriend or whatever or whoever outside. Have them come and work with you. You just have to, right? Or you have to ask permission to date folk. Listen, if, if you see somebody changing, you see an attitude changing, or you just get a slight idea of an attitude change, make sure you have your production manager and your personal assistant with you when you're with that person at all times. Even if you're just talking about what store to go to. Believe me, I had a friend who I had known for years, and we worked together. She was one of the best talents I had, and she didn't get a role. Something happened, she didn't get a role. The attitude changed, and I had to have her escorted off my set from other people to avoid things that was going out in the gossip world, right? 
you have to cover your butt. It's a new world. Listen, um, when you deal with people, try and see things from the other person's point of view. Try and think to see things from their point of view. Realize if they're doing something to protect you or doing something to hurt you, and if you're not really sure why it's being done or said, then it's probably not good. Go from the negative, build a horror floor. Building a horror floor is really important. Build a horror floor and then work it from there and then find out, talk and communicate. Talk and communicate. And when you talk and communicate, that's how you know. Your people, if you're a good person, they're gonna love you. Most of the people, I, I would say 98% of the people love me. But there's a percentage of people who really can't stand at me. And there's gonna be a percentage of people who is not gonna be able to stand you. And it just it's just something that happens. People can't stand other people doing good or being happy. I'm really, really happy. I'm really happy in industry and, and people that know me know that I'm happy in the industry so they don't, they can't get to that part. But they say, oh, well, you, you're not Spike Lee. You're not so-and-so, you're not. Fame was another part of my agenda. I didn't want fame, I didn't need fame, right? What I needed was to do film. I need a film, not fame. But fame, fame is part of certain people's agendas, but they will look for weaknesses and ways to tear you down. Be strong, be confident. Be who you are, strong and confident, right? Coping with difficult people is a really important aspect in this industry. I can go on and on about it, but I'm going to give you this one piece of advice. Always be kind, always be respectful, be courteous, be strong. Know what it is that you're going for. You're going to complete a movie. That's all it is. Fights happen on the set. Egos clash. This one talks to you about that one. That one talks to you about this one. All of that. You have to be a counselor. You have to work with everyone. People come in and let I me, mean, oh, and this is something really, really important. Make sure that there's no discussions of politics or religion on your set. Politics and religion will kill your entire program. Listen, I love Barack Obama. I love him. I love him. I would, if there was a war broke out and Barack was in charge and he asked for people to go fight, I would go fight for Barack. I don't have a great liking for the current president. I don't have a great liking for him. I met him, right? I met him, talked to him. And when I met him, I liked him. And then when I found out who he was, I just didn't. But on the set, I have people who love the other guy. They love him and they hate Barack, right? And that brings a certain tension. Those kind of, don't even have those, don't have the conversations on the set, don't have it on breaks. Well, if you hear people talking, you have to say, there's stage somebody, please let's change the subject and let them know we, we don't want to talk about religion or politics. Black and right, race, you don't want to talk about that on the set. Race relations, you don't, you really don't want to do it. Unless it's that kind of show, right? As a religious show or a political show, right? you just want to stay away from those subjects. And you don't want to get your personal opinion or personal beliefs anywhere on the set either, right? I'm a Christian. Some of my actors are atheists. I'm black. Some of them are white, right? I'm, I'm straight. Some of them are gay. Whatever. Stay away from it. Keep it off your set. Listen, we went about double time, but this is really, really most important. One of the most important lessons you can learn. And whoever listened to this, and if you came to the end, you're probably serious about your business and you're going to be very, very successful in this business because you really want to learn and you really want to know. And you know it's not me 
it's the lessons and it's the information that I'm giving, right? So all the other stuff just goes out the window. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, for sitting here and listening to the end and learning. You're going to have a great film. Listen, I'm always available. I'm available for consultation. Um, below, you'll have links to some of my movies and stuff. Um, if you need to contact me, email me. I'm always ready to talk. I'm always ready to consult. I truly, truly appreciate you. Thanks a lot. And I'm going to see you at the top.